We're actually homebrewing today, so we're going to be doing a homebrew episode. We're making a molasses Imperial Russian Stout. Our goal is to get about 10%. Uh, we've got about six different types of uh, malts in there that we're going to use. So we're just uh, heating up our water right now. Uh, we got all our gear, so we're going to get started homebrewing. So uh, we'll cut out in and out as we get it going. So stay tuned. So now we've got our uh, water up to 170 for our mash. We've uh, put a little bit in our mash tun here. We've got our grain. We've got about 21 pounds of... We've got two big bags like this just all full of grain. Let's see, I don't know if you can see that in there, but we got some lovely crushed grain in there. So we've got about 21 pounds of grain. Um, this is, like I said, this is one bag of two. So uh, we're going to go ahead and add that to the mash tun here, and we're going to get that going. So we'll take a couple shots of as as I add the grain in here. So So yeah, that's that's a good temperature. We started off with about 10 gallons of uh, water in here. Now we're down to about three. So we put about seven gallons of water in there. So what we, did, we just did with the grains is called the mash. So we took all the grains, all the roasted uh, malted barley, and we're sparging, we're, we're mashing it at 150 degrees. 155 right in there. What that's doing is that's extracting all of the fermentable sugars from the malt and what we'll have after that is what's called wort, which is just a really sweet malty tea basically. So from there we're going to take that and we're going to boil that with the hops and then we will have beer. So, um, well after the fermentation is, is done. But, this is the first step. So this is called the mash, and uh, now we're going to let this rest for about 40 minutes to an hour uh, to really extract all those, let it steep just like you would with tea, um, and then we'll come back and uh, start the boil. Okay, so we're starting to do a Vorloft. So we're going to start it going, pour it off into like little pitchers, and then we're going to put it back into the mash tun, and we're going to keep continue to do that until it's until it runs clear so we see we got a little bit of a grain that's coming out in there so but it's coming out black that's the way a stout should look that's good so can you swap it so we're just we're kind of uh, putting it on there real nice and gentle because we don't want to disturb the grains we don't want to get a stuck mash, so we're using a ladle to kind of diffuse it a little bit. That is black. <laughs> okay, so now we're pouring in the last one. We've done this about eight or nine times with these pitchers. To uh, make sure that it's running clear and as you can see in that picture it's just clear black well it's not clear but it's it's got it doesn't have really any floaties or anything or any bits of particles of grain it's just uh, pure black gold Texas tea uh, and uh, now we're gonna start the sparging process to drain off the wart now with the sparging process we've still got that going now we got it down into a much bigger pan and over here we still have some water left that we've heated up to 170 degrees we're going to run that into the mash tun and then into the pot collect all the wort in the pot and put it back in here for the boil so so now i don't know if you can see in there it's inky blackness 
we're getting ready to start the boil. We've got about three, four gallons in there right now, and we're still collecting from our sparge. And we're still collecting uh, wart from the sparge. So this pot right here is about, I think it's about three gallons, totally full. So we'll add that to that. What we're looking for to get is about seven gallons or so, uh, six, seven gallons, because some of that, we're going to boil this for an hour, and some of that's going to boil off. So uh, we are going to bring it up to temperature, get it boiling, and once we get it there, we're going to start adding some hops. So, okay. Up your lens. Yeah. Instantly. Huh. You do it from so we got a good rolling boil you going. Stand on this thing? No, 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 no. I don't want to stand on it. We got a. Well, I can just hold it up here. We got a good rolling boiling boil going. I don't know if you can see that with all the steam, but uh, take it from over here, maybe. So now we got it up to a real good rolling boil, and uh, we're gonna keep it that way for about 30 minutes, and then we're gonna start adding some hops, and then we're gonna boil it for another hour. We're gonna add hops and we're gonna add molasses. So we're gonna add about two pounds of molasses in there. So it's gonna get even thicker, even darker, if that's possible. So now we're gonna add some hops. We've got a cup, two ounces of Fuggles. Here we're gonna open that up. Man, that is hoppy. And we're just gonna, now we're just gonna dump them right on in there. Stuff them in there and stir that up. There we go. So that's the first top addition. And we're going to add some molasses. I'm going to add a lot of molasses. So here we go. Gloopy, gloopy. I want to stir this up as we're adding it so it doesn't sink to the bottom and just burn. Molasses and first hop addition added, so we're good to go. Let that go for another half hour, then we'll do another hop addition. Man, that's like coffee. That's nice stuff. So, we've been boiling now for about, a, about an hour. We're going to add one more addition of hops here. Another two ounces of Fuggles. We're doing a single hop beer. Another two ounces of Fuggles are going in there. So we're going to put that in. And uh, that's the second addition. And then uh, in another half hour, it'll be flame out. And then we'll be ready to uh, use our counterflow chiller, go into our bucket. Got it all set up. So And a counterflow immersion chiller. And there's actually, there's copper tubing running in through this through this uh, hose so we've also got hose fittings for a garden hose so water is going to be running in it through it over the cool over the hot wart so it'll cool it off real good so okay so we've got our hose attached here to the spigot it's running down through the counterflow chiller hooked up to the garden hose and down into our sanitized bucket coming out pretty slow because I want to make sure that it's cool and that's that's almost cold this thing is working absolutely perfectly so if you don't have one of these definitely invest in one of these or make one yourself it's not all that hard to do maybe we'll uh, make one and bring you a video on it I'm not sure so so we're cooling it off once this is um, once this is all in there, um, we're going to pull off a bit and do a gravity reading, so we know how much alcohol we're going to get. Here's our hydrometer reading. We've got the we've got the uh, hydrometer tube set up in this inky black C, and we will spin it here just to make sure we get a good clear reading. And we're pretty much right at one point, yeah, pretty much right at 1.10. So this, that's about 10% alcohol. So we're at 1.10. We figured that out. 
let's figure out at what temperature at 80 degrees so 1.10 at 80 degrees normally when they do gravity readings it's done against a uh, 69 degrees I believe which is the optimum pitching temperature for ale yeast um, so this is a little hot so we'll have to run some calculations to bring it down which will actually make the viscosity greater it'll actually make our official gravity greater so here we go we're gonna pitch our yeast comes in a little tube like this white labs it's good stuff um, you just pop the top and dump it in that's all there is to it so so now we've we've got our spoon that we've sanitized we're just gonna stir that up real good agitate it a little bit get a little bit of air in there yeast likes oxygen so there we go that's good put the lid on it and we have made beer so okay so now the beer has stopped in primary fermentation there's no more bubbles coming out of the airlock so now we're going to rack it down into a six gallon glass carboy I got my sanitizer bucket with my auto siphon set up here so we're gonna stick that in there and rack it off so so that's what we have in the bucket and you can see on the side there's some black goo that was the Krausen that formed the foamy um, head from the fermentation process and that looks about as black as can be black gold so So now I have an auto siphon here just stuck in there and tube comes down stick that into the fermenting vessel and what's cool about the auto siphon is that this is kind of hard to do with one hand is you lift this part out and then you push it back down and boom it starts to flow just like that and you can see it siphoning in there so what we want to do the reason why you rack it in the secondary is that you want to <clears throat> down at the bottom of the carboy about this much of the carboy here it's going to be just these leftover yeast black goo um, it's all, all hops that have all separated out they've all fallen to the bottom so we want to get it off get the beer off that um, to prevent from any extra off flavors and also give it a chance to settle out even more so okay so we're gonna do our hydrometer reading now so drop it in there I got my little dish to catch the overflow let's see what it says wow it's at 1.028 so that tells me there's a lot of residual sugars left in there it didn't really ferment out all the way it tells me that it's uh, it's still pretty sweet but going into secondary that can still kick up some um, secondary well, secondary fermentation hence the name so hopefully it'll do that and eat up a little bit more of those sugars uh, we'll do a secondary fermentation let it sit in that for about 10 days and see how that goes hey guys okay we're back we're ready to keg our beer I don't know if you can see this over here this is our beer our, our stout that we made we're ready to put it in the keg um, just got to get that ready not going to go into kegging real hard as I assume um, most of your homebrewers out there know how to keg your beer um, if not there's a lot of good videos out there to watch but uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it um, but I do have a couple extra things we're not gonna keg this whole five gallons we're gonna split off two gallons uh, we're gonna split off one gallon and put tart cherries and bernomiasis and then we're gonna split off another gallon for bourbon oak chips and then the rest of the three gallons are gonna go in the keg so hey guys okay so We've got all the beer in, uh, in the 
the keg now. Uh, put my taps on this and uh, start to pressurize it. So I got my um, CO2 tank. So I'm going to set that up and then um, let it carbonate for a couple days. And I'll be back with a glass of, from what I've tasted from the wort, really killer taste and stop. So I'll share that with you and give you a little tasting review on it. Well, we finished our beer. And it has a uh, low level of carbonation at this point, and it weighs in at 8.7. Yeah, about 8.7. Yeah. 8.7 percent ABV, and let's give her a taste. Wow, that is a very full-bodied imperial stout. It has a lot of uh, roasted malt characteristics, like black coffee, a really dark chocolate and the molasses does come through so uh, it's really nice to know that the ingredients that you put into the beer you can actually taste the ingredients so that's always important yeah the aftertaste of molasses really holds through it's like that really deep like burnt sugar flavor yeah very good beer give it probably another couple days in the keg and it'll be fully carbonated and ready for drinking. Cool. Cheers. Cheers.